Good morning, everyone. How are you today? So happy Wednesday. We are halfway through the week. <laughs> um, I'm sorry I'm a few minutes late today. My kids literally start school 15 minutes before this, so it's hard for me to get back in time. I will be probably a few minutes late on Friday as well. Um, my name is Brandy. I'm with Brushed by Brandy, and I am a Dixie Belle Paint brand ambassador. And Dixie Belle has taken over the World of Chalk Paint, Distress, and Decoupage group this week. And so they've asked me to come on and do a five-day series, a five-day series of lives. That's an informational series. Um, and so we're on day three of that. If you haven't caught the other ones, they're on the same page. They'll be back, uh, scroll back through the thread. Um, but we've already done one for Monday and Tuesday so far. So if you guys can see me okay, let me know. I see a few people popping on, um, but we'll go ahead and get started. Today, we are going to talk about staging. Now, one thing I wanna say, hi, Thea. Um, one thing I want to say about staging is staging is an art and it's just like painting where there is no right or wrong way to do staging. So what I talk about today, this is going to be my style and my opinion of staging, but by no means is it the only way of staging. Um, thank you. Yay. I sound good. Okay. I'm on. <laughs> I did it. That's an accomplishment for today. So. I told you guys yesterday when we toured my workspace that today I would open up my staging area and I'm gonna show you guys what I have. So behind me, I have one, two, three metal cabinets. These are in my garage space, which is also my workspace. And I'm gonna start opening them. That was my stamp block that just fell. Okay, so behind me are my staging cabinets. Now everything in here I have acquired over the last couple of years and I use it for staging and I pulled out a few of my favorite things that I'm going to show you guys today. Yeah, I know that's, that's my stamp block just fell. It's okay. It's not broken though. My stamp block. Um, so these three cabinets I keep in my, my workspace and these are where I pull my staging items from. Now everything in here I've acquired over the last, what, probably two, two and a half years. Um, and my general theory on staging items is I will take from every purchase, or at least I did, I would take at least 10% of my profit and I would reinvest that back into my business. Whether that is in materials or in staging items, I would reinvest that into um, things that I could use for, for the future of my business. And a lot of that was staging items. Now, none of this have I paid full retail price for, so I'm not going to home goods and shopping for staging items. Most of it I will pick up off of, um, you know, free or low cost yard sale sites, Facebook marketplace. If I'm at a thrift store and I see something cute I can use, I'll grab it. But all of this stuff has been um, accumulated that way. Yeah, reinvest into your business, you guys. This is so, you know, at 10%, let's say you sell a dresser at $500, so you can take $50 and go buy some new gilding waxes go buy a new color of paint, pick up a couple staging items with it. Yeah, so um, it doesn't necessarily have to be into staging, Thea. It could be into a, you know, a new product that you haven't tried yet that you want to. So I've pulled out a few of my favorite staging items and I've got them over to the side here. I'm gonna show you guys. So my general theory on staging is I like to pull out number one, the colors of the metal that I used in my piece. So if I use Gold, I will pull out the gold in my staging items. If I have silver hardware, I will pull out the silver in my staging. Um, black, pull out the black. Um, and then I also like to focus on the colors of my piece. So I like to tie into the colors of my piece. If I don't have anything that's that particular color, I will choose a complementary color. So complementary colors are, if you look at your color wheel, are colors that are across the color wheel from each other. Um, it can also be colors that are adjacent to each other. <laughs> That's the great my husband's on. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys a couple of my favorite things that I use for staging. So I mentioned the colors of the metal. So for example, I use gold a lot. I like gold. It, it's a nice pop of color against just about any piece. So I use a gold base is a great thing to have. No matter what size you choose to have, pick up a gold base somewhere. So here's a larger one. Here's a smaller one. Um, I don't think either any, any is more preferable than the other, but pick up a gold base somewhere. Oops. 
So same as I told you about pulling in your metal colors, here's a darker metal, same thing, a base and a lighter metal. This is just a, a used silver um, pitcher that I got at a thrift store, very inexpensively. This I think was from Hobby Lobby, but with your 40% off, things like this cost four or five dollars. Um, let's see, I use florals in just about every photo. So bring in some silk florals. Silk florals are one of those things where it's a great thing to pick up two or three sprigs of a floral um, when you're reinvesting into your business that 10%, pick up two or three sprigs of a new floral. I have a huge tote. It's inside my house and it's all full of just silk florals. So I can pull out any color of silk florals. This is just a pink rose. Um, I really like this ceramic bowl. I tend to use this a lot. It's just a white ceramic dish. This goes great for farmhouse looks. I try to keep my staging in line with the um, style of my piece. So if it's a farmhouse looking piece, I'll use farmhouse staging. This is what they would have used to wash their face and hands, you know, in an old farmhouse. So it's very consistent with that look. If I'm doing something that's more dark and masculine, I will pull that out in my staging. So these are a couple items that would be considered probably more masculine. This is a bonsai tree. It's still a floral, but it's not um, very feminine like some of the pink flowers might be. You know, this is a vintage, it's a faux vintage camera, but this go, these would go great together on a more masculine piece darker colors. Um, used books are great. I try to pick up things that have interesting spines on them. Um, let me show you one here. So this one I like. This is a Charles Dickens David Copperfield. This is an old book and it's just beautiful. It's got a great spine on it, great colors. I've got a whole bunch. Now you can either get authentic vintage books you can go to the goodwill and these are about three dollars a piece you take the paper covers off and you've got a beautiful hardbound book underneath so pick up a few vintage books and the reason why remember we talked about having a base these are great for adding height if you need height on an item whether it's a vase on top or a little candle on top um, old books are great for adding height um, and your books can either be these kind, these are the fake books, you know, the little boxes that you'll see in shops sometimes, but when you turn it to its spine, you'd never know that that's a fake book or real books. This is one with the paper jack jacket missing. So make sure you have, I, you know, I would say three to five used books, definitely something you want to have in your saving collection. So for taller items, I would also recommend having some kind of floor vase. So this is a taller vase, but when I'm staging taller items, I can put this floor vase next to it on the floor. And for example, I did an armoire recently. Hey Dana, you're not late girl, you're right on time. Um, for taller items where you don't necessarily have space or, or much to put anything in or on the piece, you can set something next to the piece. And a floor vase is great for that. So this is what I was talking about with picking up, you know, two or three. This is, let's see, I've got four in here. These are just cherry blossom branches that I picked up and you want to put them together in your hand. Does it make a nice, you know, full looking bunch? Everybody likes flowers. They do. Everybody likes flowers. Flowers are eye catching. They make people feel good. What do you give when people aren't feeling well or your wife is mad at you? You give flowers. Um, Sean, just got me flowers. Don't worry. So silk flowers are a huge thing to have, and I've got them in several different colors. You know, these are some pre, preformed ones that I've got, but they're great for nice pops of color. So I like the yellow for pops of color. I try to keep this somewhat organized. So then I could tie in another pop of yellow in my staging as well. So, you know, to begin with, I would definitely say invest in your florals, a few vases, in your books, um, and then you can start picking up cute little items like this. But I try to go for the brighter colored items, things I don't already have in my collection. So, um, you know, I don't need 15 yellow things. I try to spread it out so I've got a little bit of yellow, a little bit of pink, a little bit of blue, 
Um, and then as I do different color pieces, I've got different colors of shapes that you can use. So these would be a good example of blue. And these are not expensive items. These are just a couple of glass jars. See that right there? Backwards, huh? $3. You know, that you can get cute, pretty little. And that is a nice pop of color when I've got a blue or a teal piece. Hey, Crystal. The greenery is also a great one. So um, greenery is, is another good one for farmhouse looks. This could also be used on a more masculine piece. It has the same feel in a photo as a floral, but it's just a piece of greenery. And then you can bring in multiples of the same item, you know, that are similar but not exact to coordinate with each other. I'm doing tutorials in here all week. You got two more after this. So those are a few of my favorite staging items. The floor base, the different colored metallic bases, the silk florals, some used books. Definitely, definitely, definitely good things to have. Um, you know, candle holders are another nice one. I'm trying to look through here and see. Some of these are just little items that I use occasionally, but those are definitely the ones that I use more often. So I also want to say that uh, staging does not have to be super expensive. So for example, I'm going to paint these. I'll probably paint them on camera, but these are worth $4 at Hobby Lobby. They're cute little cacti and I'm going to paint these and I could make a, you know, cute terracotta pot, maybe with some um, patina paint dripping down it with some greens on my little cactus. These were $4 at Hobby Lobby and they were 50% off. So that will be a $2 cute little cactus that I can use in my future staging. I also picked up some of these little anchors for a more nautical theme. Um, also at Hobby Lobby, I got a cute little fishing net that I could, from the party supplies that I could drape across the background with some little anchors that are done also maybe in a patina paint. So you can make your own staging items. If you find a vase or something that you like the shape of it, it's got good interest, but you don't like the color, bring it home and paint it. artwork for staging. I've got a few pieces of artwork that are my favorites and they're my favorites usually because they're your guys favorites. So I love to see the things that um, people react to in photos a little bit and that tells me what kind of staging is catching people's eye. So one of them I'm going to show you right here. This is a piece of artwork. Do you guys recognize her? So this is my print my canvas of the girl with the pearl earring. And I love using her whenever I can. So number one, she's got great shades of yellow, great shades of blue. Um, it's a very, could be a feminine or a masculine piece. It's a very classic piece of artwork. I love using this canvas. Yeah, I'm standing here at the museum. Um, so it's very interesting. It's eye-catching. This, this canvas I love because no matter where you are in a room, it looks like she's looking at you. Her glare is just magnetic so this is a great great piece that i love i picked that up offline i want to say I paid 26 dollars for it but that's one of my favorites so another one of my favorites you guys are going to start noticing a theme here i like this one too another very dramatic piece of artwork these are eye-catching it may not be something i would necessarily put in my home but these are things that will catch people's eye when they're looking at it this, you can almost feel her anguish as she's laying there, or it could also be the relaxation. So I think this piece, it's got beautiful shades of pink and white in it. So I can use this for more pale pieces. It's very feminine, um, looks great with some florals with it. So do you guys see my, my theme here? I like people, dramatic people in my artwork. So she's kind of gazing out the window, but this one has um, black and gold in it, some shades of blue. So I can tie this in with a whole bunch of different colored pieces. So I like the dramatic people. I like the people that kind of, you can feel their emotion in the artwork and putting that with your piece gives your piece some emotion too. So a couple other of my favorites. I use this a lot. This is from Hobby Lobby. This I would probably actually put in my home, 
but this just says farmhouse. It's got great wood tones on it. So this goes great with farmhouse style with, um, you know, pieces that aren't as colorful, a little more muted. I use that a lot too. So these again, um, the, the two girls, not, not the girl with the pearl earring, but the same two, I picked those up off Facebook marketplace. I usually don't pay more than $10 for a canvas. I usually don't. This, this one, I'm showing him because I love the colors in this one. This has great colors for staging. So I've got some um, staging art that's more muted. I've also got some staging art that's got some more colors in it. Now this brings me to a point. I am not a fan of Photoshop staging items. I'm just not. Um, if I can look at something and it doesn't have natural shadowing or it doesn't look like the feet are touching the floor, it, you know, I just, it doesn't give you that same wow factor. So my preference, and I'm going to say this on camera, is stay away from the Photoshop staging items and Photoshopping in your background. They don't look natural. I could ask any one of my customers, would you rather see, you know, a semi-okay staged piece or a Photoshop staged piece? They're every time going to say that they'd rather see even a little bit poorer staging, but have it be real. You know, if, if my eye can't look at something and it doesn't look natural, it makes me question everything about that piece. Is the piece even real? You can fo spot Photoshop staging in a second. Yeah, I'm afraid it's becoming kind of a trend and I don't think it's a good one either. You know, take the time to put your piece out. I, I would rather even see someone's garage door staging than, um, than to see Photoshop staging. So I'm gonna put that out there. I don't think the brands are liking it. It's not a photo that they could put in a magazine ad or put it out on a Pinterest ad or anything like that because it's, it's a, you know, obviously Photoshop staging. So take the time, invest in a couple good staging pieces, um, you know, do the best that you can with what you got, but avoid the, uh, avoid the Photoshop guys, avoid it. Um, so I like him because he's colorful, he's got personality, he's got emotion, just like my other pieces of artwork do. So you'll notice that I try to pick up things that are in colors that I don't already have. If I'm short on, you know, art with some blues in it, I'll pick up a blue piece. If I'm short on something with pinks, I'll pick up a pink piece. Um, another great one to have is a funky gold mirror. So this is kind of a starburst gold mirror. Um, now in my new staging space, I get a reflection. So I do have a um, video out on my YouTube channel on how to Photoshop mirrors reflections. Now I just um, talked about not Photoshopping your photos. Here's the thing. There's a difference between natural looking Photoshop and fake looking Photoshop. And then there's a difference between, hey, I'm just trying to take my image out of the mirror so you don't see me in the background. Um, and so I, I do use you know, Photoshop to edit my mirror images. Nobody wants to see me standing there holding my camera, taking a photo of a mirror. So I do. And then in my garage, you can see that I get a reflection of all my, you know, industrial looking stuff. So a gold mirror is great to have. Um, if you take your photos outdoors, you can just tilt your mirror to get a reflection of the sky or something pretty and natural looking. Um, if you're indoors, you may have to learn how to edit a mirror image. Mirrors can be tough to photograph into. Or your legs showing in the mirror. Yeah, exactly. I would have to shave them. Okay, so another couple things about staging. And I'm going to take you over to a piece in a second that I actually have set up. Um, but you usually want to follow a rule of threes. Um, and it could be the rule of threes, the rule of fives. It's generally just called the rule of threes in design. And what that means is you want to have usually three complementary items and you want to vary your height a little bit so that there's interest in all levels of your photo. You don't want to have everything really low to your table um, to where your level of interest is only right at your table height. You want to kind of vary the scale of your staging items. So you would want to put, you know, I'm just going to pull out a couple examples you know, a taller item and over here, you've got a little bit shorter item. And so it's a little bit staggered in your photos. So add interest at all the levels in your pictures. Um, your, your background should be free of clutter. So I would not take a photo in front of my, you know, staging wall here. You want to have a neutral background free of color. I'm not going to say white. It doesn't have to be white. I don't use a white background, but it should be neutral and free of color. 
let's walk over to a piece I have put up over here. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about this piece here. If I can get you guys up tall enough. So this is my actual staging wall behind us. I'm gonna talk about a couple of things. Now, again, by no means is this perfect or the only way this could be staged. This is just a couple ideas. So I'm using my rule of threes. I've got one in my floral over here. My artwork counts as one. And then I've got another display over here. If this was a longer dresser, I'd probably want to make that rule of threes be five items instead. Let me lower you down a little bit. So I can bring you in closer. So see what I'm talking about? Where I've got one, my art is the second, and um, two, or number three over there. You are selling a dream. You are selling a dream. You don't want this dresser to look like what it would actually look like in your home, because here's what it would look like in my home. It would have laundry hanging out the drawers. It would have messy papers all over the top. That's real life, but you're selling the dream. You want to sell people with what can this piece be in their home? What could it look like? Everybody dreams of having that perfectly decorated home, even if your house is not perfectly decorated. So you want to sell people on what could this piece be in their home? So let me take off my real staging here. Um, bright pops of color are eye catching. So here I've got a little bit of yellow in my piece. So I tied in the yellow with my staging. I pulled that out. So in a photo, it's going to make that yellow all the more noticeable. Um, I also pulled out, I didn't use a yellow floral. I used some oranges. It's a little bright pop of color. It's, coordinates it complements the yellow and the green in my pieces sell the dream exactly you're trying to sell the dream um, so show people how, what this could be at its best um, my artwork has kind of a farmhousey feel it ties in with the wood top on my piece so this is an example of some staging if this piece was longer I could take that rule of threes and I could make say five little displays across the top you don't want to get over cluttery though if it looks cluttery Remove a couple of items from your piece. If I was going to pull a piece of metal out on this, I, if I was going to put a base or something, aside from this clear one, I would pull out the black metal that is used on my hardware. Um, green staging. This could be staged more masculine with just a little bit of greenery if I needed to. It could be staged with a farmhousey feel. So next to it, you guys saw this armoire that I did. I couldn't really put anything on or in this without blocking any of the front of it. So I've seen armoires staged really pretty with just a wreath on the front of it or something very simple, but this has a transfer on it. So all I did with this one, this was where that floor vase that I showed you at the beginning came in handy. So I just put a floor vase. It still had the florals. It still looked decorated, but it was just a simple floor vase set next to it. Um, a pretty chair set next to it can be um, another one. And I've got a chair sitting here that I picked up at Goodwill for $10 that I plan to redo. Um, I've got some, I bought some ticking stripe fabric. I'm going to recover this chair and it'll be my staging chair. It's that little guy right there. So let's see. Um, you want to take your photos nice and level with your piece. So I'm going to show you an example right on my camera. If I come way up here to get my top, that's kind of a cool shot of my top, but it makes my piece look a little bit dwarfed. You want to come down here, get your camera nice and level with the top of your piece, and get the front of it, the full front of it, in your camera shot. So make sure your photos are not be being taken up too high or too low. If you come on a staging day, you'll find me rolling around on my stool like you know, like a photographer does. You have to learn. <laughs> I'm not the best either. Um, I've never been a photographer. I don't know a lot about photography, but um, you have to get those different angles. So you'll find me sitting on the floor, laying on the floor sometimes, trying to get those really cool angles. If you've got a cool spot on your piece, you know, that's got really great character, get a, get a shot of this piece, but make sure that shot has a little bit of this flower in it too. And it's going to make it all that more good. Um, so my wall here has neutral paint on it. It's a light gray color. Y your paint can be dramatic, can be neutral, depends on how you want your photos to be. But it looks like a real interior space. So 
I even went so far, this is in my workshop, and I hung curtains because I have a window. I would hang curtains on my window. So I hung curtains. So it looks like a genuine interior space when I take photos of my pictures. So those are some of my recommendations. It's just the very basics. And like I said, there is no right or wrong way to do your staging, but those are some very basic tips, some good guidelines to follow when you're taking your pictures. Um, and a few must-haves that you should have with your staging. So I hope that was helpful. Again, just the basics. Um, you know, one more thing I do wanna add is lighting. I have lighting kits. Um, sometimes you're forced to use artificial lighting. You don't have natural lighting in your space. 100%, anytime it's available, I will tell you to choose natural lighting over artificial lighting. Um, there is nothing that will bring out colors in your piece like natural lighting will. So yeah, there's some great lighting kits out there. You can get daylight bulbs, but nothing is the same as using natural lighting. I use 100% natural lighting in my photos. I open my window, I open my door that's right here, and my space is flooded with light. If you don't have that, if you're taking photos, you know, in front of your, I used to take photos in front of my garage door and I set up a backdrop. Um, of, I actually was using bifold doors at the time um, that I would set up and it gave me a nice clean white backdrop. You couldn't tell that I was outside, but I was getting great natural lighting. I knew the time of day that the shadows fell on my house. I knew I had to take my photos in the morning or I would start getting shadows in the front of my house. Um, things like that are important to learn. There are certain times of day that you can get better light in a room than others. If you have to use a lighting kit, let me grab my lighting kit. This has so much dust on it because I don't use it. But if you have to use a lighting kit, um, get daylight bulbs. So these are daylight bulbs. Um, and it will give you the closest thing to natural daylight, but I've taken photos with these and they do not, they can't even compare. So, and then this is a gold umbrella, but you can use your white umbrella to reflect the light back onto your piece. Um, as many lights as you can get in that area. If you have to go pull lamps from 10 other rooms in your house to bring light to that piece when you're staging it, you want to make sure it's well lit. You want to make sure that your color looks true in the picture. So if, if it's actually a blue and when you photograph it, it looks green, then that's not, you know, that's probably not the best lighting for that piece. So that's my opinion on um, lighting kits too. I know I'm super opinionated today. So anyways, um, I'm going to get off. I hope that touched on just a little bit about everything, but I'm going to get off and tomorrow we're going to come back and talk about going live on Facebook. Super intimidating for a lot of people. I'll give you my best tips there. Um, hopefully make that a little bit easier for you. And then Friday, we're going to talk about brush care. We're going to explore my brush cleaning station. So hope you guys enjoyed that. Thank you for joining me on day three of my live series, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.